Our team would like to introduce the famous short story uh, by Oscar Wilde, which is called The Selfish Giant. Uh, the story was first published in 1888 um, with five sto stories in the collection The Happy Prince and Other Tales by Oscar Wilde. Uh, generally, the story is about the young boy who is the messenger of God uh, and Selfish Giant. The giant wouldn't allow the children to play in his garden. Uh, and here in this garden always was cold, winter. Uh, after seeing young boy, a giant understood that he was selfish. As soon as children returned, the garden blossomed again and began to delight everyone. But in the farthest corner of the garden, a harsh winter reigned. The little boy couldn't reach the branches of the tree because of his size. So... He couldn't make the tree happy and bloom. As soon as the giant meets the little boy, his heart will melt like a snow in his garden. Regretting how, uh, regretting his deed and realizing how selfish he was, the giant regrets and corrects the situation, forever turning his garden into a playground. The children uh, still came and they played in the, his garden. Except for the little boy, um, he loved. He missed him. Uh, a few years later, when the giant was getting old, he saw a tree with a wild, with white flowers in the corner of the garden, and the underneath it was that little boy. As he approached the boy, he suddenly became enraged because of the boy's wounds. Smiling at the Giant, he called him to his garden, and he, his garden was paradise. The next day, the children found the giant dead. And that's how the tale of the selfish giant ends. Uh, the story teaches uh, the importance of sharing the good things in life and how it brings happiness to not just uh, the one uh, it's being shared with but also the one who is sharing. A kind uh, heart is always a blessing. It also teaches um, that one uh, gets what he gives. Uh, if you spread happiness, uh, you will get happiness in return. And uh, if you give sadness to others, it comes back uh, to you many faults. Uh, hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about the author of this work. Uh, first of all, uh, the author of this work is Oscar Wilde. Uh, he was an Irish poet and playwright. Uh, after writing in different forms uh, through the uh, 1880s, he became one of the most popular uh, playwrights in London uh, in the early 1890s. Uh, he is best remembered uh, for, this, uh, for his epigrams and plays. Uh, his novel is The Picture of Dorian Gray and, of course, uh, the story uh, The Selfish Giant. Uh, he was born in October uh, 16 uh, in Dublin, Ireland, and died uh, in November uh, 13 in Paris, France. The Selfish Giant by Oscar Wilde Every afternoon, as they were coming from school, the children used to go and play in, a, in the giant's garden. It was a large, lovely garden with soft green grass. Here and there, over the grass, stood beautiful flowers like stars, and there were twelve peach trees that in the springtime broke out into the delicate blossoms of pink and pearl, and in the autumn bore rich fruit. The birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children used to stop their games in order to listen to them. How happy you were here, they cried to each other. One day, the giant came back. He had been visited to his grand, the Cornish Ogre, and had stayed with him for seven years. After the seven years, they were over what he had to say, and for his conversation was limited, and he determined to return to his own castle. When he arrived, he saw the children playing in the garden. What are you doing here? He cried in a very gruff voice, and the children ran away. My own garden is my own garden, said the giant, and anyone can understand that, and I will allow nobody to play in it but myself.
So he built a high wall all around it and put up a notice board. Trespassers will be persecuted. He was a very selfish giant. The poor children had now nowhere to play. They tried to play on the road, but the road was very dusty and full of hard stones, and they didn't like it. They used to wander around the high wall when their lessons were ended and talk about the beautiful garden inside. How happy we were there, they said to each other. Then the spring came and all over the country there were little blossoms and little birds. Only in the garden of the selfish giant it was still winter. The birds didn't care to sing in it, as there were no children and the trees forgot to blossom. Once a beautiful flower put its head out from the grass, but when it saw a notice board, it was so sorry for the children that it split it back into the ground again and went off to sleep. The only people who were pleased were the snow and the frost. Spring has forgotten this garden, they cried. So we will live here all the year round. The snow covered up the grass with her great white cloak and the frost painted all trees silver. Then, then they invited the north wind to stay with them and he came. He was wrapped in furs and his wrote all day about the garden and blew the chimney pots down. It's a delightful spot, he said. We must ask the hail on a visit. So the hail came. Every day for three hours he rattled on the roof of the castle till he broke most of the slates and then he ran round and round the garden as fast as he could go. He was dressed in grey and his breath was like ice. I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the selfish giant as he sat at the window and looked out at his gold white garden. I hope there will be change in the weather. But the spring never came, nor the summer. The autumn gave golden fruit to every garden, but to the giant's garden she gave none. He's too selfish, she said. So it was always winter there, and the north wind, and the hail, and the frost, and the snow danced about through the trees. One morning, the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It sounded so sweet to his ears that he thought it was, must be king's musicians passing by. It was really only a little linnet singing outside his window, but it was so long since he, he had heard a bird sing in his garden that it seems to him to be the, be the most beautiful music in the world. Then the hare stopped dancing over his head and the north wind ceased rowing, and the delicious perfume came to him through the open casement. I believe the spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. What did he see? He saw a most wonderful sight through a little hole in the wall. The children had crept in, and they were sitting in the branches of the trees. In every tree that he could see, there was a little child. And the trees were so glad to have the children back again, that they have covered themselves with blossoms, and they were weighing their arms gently above the children's heads. The birds were flying about and twittering with delight, and flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing. It was a lovely scene. Only in one corner it was still winter. It was the farthest corner of the garden and it was standing a little boy. He was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree and he was wandering all around 
it crying bitterly. The poor tree was still quiet, covered with frost and snow, and the north wind was blowing and roaring above it. Time up, little boy, said the tree, and it bent its branches down as low as it could. But the boy was too tiny, and the giant's heart melted as he looked out. How selfish I have been, he said. Now I know why the spring wouldn't come here. I will put that poor little boy on the top of the tree, and then I will knock down the wall and my garden shall be the children's playground forever and ever. He was really very sorry for what he had done. So he crept downstairs and opened the front door quite softly and went out into the garden. But when the children saw him, they were so frightened that they all ran away and the garden became winter again. Only the little boy did not run, for his eyes were so full of tears that he died not see the giant coming. And the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hand and put him up into the tree. And the tree broke at once uh, into blossom and the birds came and sang on it. And the little boy stretched out his two arms and flung them around the giant's neck and kissed him. And the other children, when they saw that giant was not wicked any longer, came running back and with them came the spring. It's your garden now, little children, said the giant. And he took a great axe and knocked down the wall. And when the people were going to market at 12 o'clock, they found the giant playing with the children in the most beautiful garden they had ever seen. All day long they played and in the evening they came to the giant to bid him goodbye. But where is your little companion? he said. The boy I put into the tree, the giant loved him the best because he had kissed him. We don't know, answered the children, he has gone away. Every afternoon, when school was over, the children came and played with the giant, but the little boy, whom the giant loved, was never seen again. The giant was very kind to all the children, yet he longed for his first little friend and often spoke of him. How how I would like to see him, he used to say. Years went over and the giant grew very old and feeble. He could not play about anymore. So he sat in a huge armchair and watched the children at their games and admired his garden. I have many beautiful flowers, he said, but the children's are the most beautiful flowers of all. One winter morning, he looked out of his window as he was dressing. He didn't hate the winter. Now he knew that it was merely the spring, the sleep and that the flowers were resting. Suddenly, he rubbed his eyes in wonder and looked and looked it certainly was a marvelous sight. In the farthest corner of the garden, was a tree quite covered with lovely white blossoms. Its branches were all golden and silver fruit hung down from them, and underneath it stood the little boy he had loved. Downstairs ran the giant in a great joy, and out into the garden he hastened across the grass. <laughs>